Welcome again to Profiles on Channel 8, Nantucket Community Television. I'm Charlie Walters. Living and playing in a sustainable world. Obviously a noble aspiration, a very human aspiration. But for my guest today, Barbara Tibbetts, it's something more than that. It's a passion project of hers, and she's here to tell us all about it. Barbara, thank you. Thank you, Charlie, for this opportunity to continue the conversations about living and playing in a sustainable world. And tell us what that is to you. Well, the, what brought me here is an event that I did that I wanted to do because I wanted conversation and education around living and playing in a sustainable world. I feel that we just don't know enough, and there's not enough conversations Ha being had for us to learn more. And I think we all know based on what we're seeing in our weather patterns right now that we have to do something. And since you live on Nantucket and have for a while, you're centered on Nantucket in relation to living and playing in a sustainable world. I think that's what has driven me to do this now. Um, I've been a summer person for over 20 years and then became um, a full-time resident about three years ago. Children were supposed to go. Two of them came home, one still with me, which is wonderful. Um, but I think living here, we have such, it, it's finite, right? We only have our island. So you do pay attention more to what the resources are, knowing how they get on and off the island, how they're used. And I think that has, has driven me to dig deeper and to sort of, I guess, go down that rabbit hole of what sustainability is about. Well, before we go a little deeper on this, I want to talk about, I can't say it's an organization, it is a project, but tell me how this this works. You, you don't have a board of directors or anything. Um, no, it's me, um, and then the people that have been so kind on this island to uh, give me a voice and allow me to have a place to to talk about sustainability and to share what I know and learn from others, which is what my event was about. Can I tell you a little bit about the event, what we did? Please do. Okay, so we actually started off with a poetry reading from Alan Reinhardt, who was has been our uh, land bank manager for many, many years here, and I think about 40 years. That's a long, long time, yeah. and he's also been a ranger for the Conservation Foundation for a very long time. Okay, I guess I, that would be his 40 year, his 40 year stint, right? Okay. Um, he's done a lot of things for this He's a done long a lot time. of things for this island and during and, his time. still doing too. And, and still doing, Alan is amazing. And he wrote a book of poetry. So we started off with a poem from him. Mm -hmm. And then we went into a sustainable fashion show. And um, one a wonderful girl, Kara Wade, did a little fashion show, but all of the items for the fashion show came from the island, from our thrift stores and from our take it or leave it at the, at the dump. And then we went into a uh, panel discussion with three different companies, um, founders, and one being um, Azure Printed Homes. Um, he was a is a company from California who makes um, ADUs out of recycled material with 3D printing. And the next one is um, Tobias Clidden, and he is ACK Smart Solar. Um, an island company, and then Bob Miklos, who is involved in a company. He's an architect and an artist and a person who lives here quite a bit of the time on the island, and his company is um, Ab Design Labs, and they do a great deal of green architecture as well. And so they were, it was wonderful because they could talk about sustainability from the viewpoint of, of building and what we're doing with our with our planet and how we're, how we're going to continue to live here. Well, that word sustainability can apply to a great number of things, and you just gave us a list of a great number of things. You're not zeroed in on one aspect of sustainability. It's, it's a big tent, as some people say. Oh, it is. For you. It should be for everybody. That's the point, is it's living and playing. It's not just living, but it's also playing. It's everything we do needs to have a viewpoint of from sustainability, and obviously we're not. None of us are perfect at this. And, um, clearly not, because look what's happening to our to our world right now and the and the weather. But together, I think we can all make a difference. But we have to have the conversations so we can understand how we can make a difference. Was well, the creator of of this project? <laughs> uh, tell us more about how it arose, going as far back as you would want to go. Oh, that would be hard. I, I guess it comes from my children telling me I've messed up the world is where it kind of started. And then, then moving here and wanting to just learn more. 
and I, you know, I learned on I learned on YouTube and I Googled and I um, used some also. Uh, went into some of the organizations here on the island. Um, Nantucket Footprints is one that talked a lot about, uh, they had a podcast on PFAS. And that made me watch the movie Dark Waters, which we showed at the, in the evening of that of the event that, that you were wonderful, the wonderful host of. Oh, well, thank you. We'll get back to that in a few minutes. <laughs> but, but there are so many aspects that it's, the conversations need to be plenty. And we needed to, I felt I had to start somewhere. I, I can't, I honestly cannot tell you why and where and how it all started. It's just one day I decided it was something I really felt I needed to do. We were talking before the show about how people on Nantucket have a much more visceral and personal connection to the island. Had you not moved to Nantucket, do you think this idea would have come to you elsewhere? No. I can honestly say that I wouldn't also have felt I could do it. I don't think the, I think living here, it's, it's, it's in our every, it's really in our everyday life um, because you have to think about how things get to the island, how they get off the island, what we do with what we have here because it's so finite. You can't just push it to the next town. There isn't a next town. Um, and the, and living here, um, I was, I, I, and I have, like I said, I've only lived here full time three years, but I was embraced by Everybody that I talked to would say, well, I can't, I, and even if they couldn't help me, they'd have a suggestion and another person to talk to. And so it, it continued, and I was able to, to talk to the right people to, to have this happen which, and make it, make it happen. Obviously, this cost some amount of money to do, although there was a lot of volunteering involved. But you're, you're not a corporation. You're not, as I said earlier, you're not an organization. So if somebody wants to write you a check, for example, is that possible? That is such an interesting question, of course. But if I think I need to think about how I go about that from a financial perspective, but I would, would love that. I had many sponsors, but they were in-kind sponsors here yeah. on the island for me to be able to make it happen. Um, but that is something I really do need to look into because I feel like I'm, it's starting to get traction. And, and doing this today tells me that it is. So I'm hopeful that we can have more conversations and more events. Well, I'm assuming that since you're not an organization, any contribution would not be tax deductible. But that's actually true for some real organization, some actual organizations. They cannot accept your money, uh, or they can accept it, but they you can't get a tax deduction out of it. That's, I'm just throwing that in there. Yeah, and we're but, always learning, right? Thank you, Charlie. Yes. <laughs> well, now you, you don't have an office. I'm not going to ask you to give out your home phone. But there is a website, lapsnow.com yep. or .org? Laps, it's lapsnow.com. .com, okay, okay. Now, um, you, you brought this up a few minutes ago, but let's uh, zero in on the event at the Nantucket Hotel. Um, tell me more about who was there, who the sponsors were, what happened. Well, I say the first sponsor would be the Nantucket Hotel. They generously um, allowed me to have the event and supported me. They were the first ones to say, okay, we can get this done for you. And um, the other sponsors uh, involved NCTV that we're at right now, They um, were, I was able to be able to film it. So you'll be seeing the event um, on, on YouTube and on the channel soon, as well as Nantucket Crisps. They were right there supporting me, telling me you can do this. Uh, and so that, that was wonderful as well, as well as ACK Solar. Tobias took his time. Mm -hmm. And Azure Printed Homes took their time to come all the way from California. And um, along with Bob Miklos gave me his time as well. So I feel like that's everybody's, that's a sponsor to me. Time is, mm -hmm. time is important. Oh, it is. Oh, absolutely. Uh, just to clarify, uh, we're taping this in mid-September. This event was in August. There, there's a good chance that by the time you're seeing this, uh, the event's taping will already be up on YouTube. It's not on YouTube as we speak, but as I say, it'll be up there soon. So uh, just because we're not referring to it as being up, it doesn't mean it isn't up by the time you're watching this. Thank you for letting me throw that in there. And also the website, it was designed just for the event, but where I feel like I wanted to go is to put information on there so that the, the, a person like me can go to one spot and see 
make some choices about living sustainably instead of having to go to one place to learn about PFAS and one place to learn about recycling a particular item. Hopefully this web, the website will then evolve into uh, a place that just anybody can go and, and find that information rather than having to dig through so many different places. And there's contact information there, I believe. So if somebody has a question for you or the project, yes. That's, that's how they get in touch with you. Yes. Now, you gave out uh, small grab bags, for lack of a better word, at this event. Tell us what was in those. So it started with, I um, had Alan's po book of poems in there because he, Al it's Alan, a, Reinhardt, Alan yeah. Reinhardt's book of poems, yes. And photographs. And Right. Thank you. His, his photographs. Exactly. The photographs that he took here on the island and the poetry that he wrote from ins being mm -hmm. inspired by the island. And then we also had in there a, a bamboo um, toothbrush uh, so that we can think about not using plastic toothbrushes anymore. Mm -hmm. And we had um, floss as well because floss has PFAS in it, which I think a lot of people don't know. And We're going to get to PFAS a little later, but yeah, it was, it was news to me a month ago. Me too. And doing this event made me go down this rabbit hole and trying to learn about all of these different things. I also had in there a reusable straw to bring attention to that about be reusing straws. And what's that made out of? That was made, that was actually, that particular one was made out of plastic, but you can clean it and reuse it. But there, um, if- it's, it's not a throwaway. That's, that is not that's a throwaway. Main, that's yes. a, you could throw it in the dishwasher or you know, a little, a little um, brush to, to clean it out. Mm -hmm. um, and one thing I have learned about paper straws is they actually also have PFAS in them. So you think you're just drinking paper, but you're not. So it's a, mm. there's all these little things that we don't know that I really would like to know, like the fact that there's PFAS in paper straws and there's PFAS in floss. And that's the whole point of what I'm doing is so that we can learn that from each other. You know, we can, we can put the information out and we can share it with those that we know. Also in that bag, I believe, was... The pen you gave me, I, I don't know how close this is to the camera, but uh, the, the light colored part of this pen is bamboo. Yes. It's not plastic, it's not metal, it's bamboo. Correct. We, 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 tr we tried, or I tried, to, to, to bring the sustainability piece into all of it. Um, and, and I'm holding a pa piece of paper that was also in the bag, and it's goals, smart goals for living, living and playing sustainably. And the S stands for save a bag, and the M stands for make a choice, so make a choice to reuse your bottle. And the A stands for avoid plastics, especially plastic utensils. And R stands for reuse containers. That's really important, how often we can reuse containers and not just throw them away. And then the T stands for teach sustainability. And those items in there with the bamboo toothbrush and the floss is all about that, about teaching sustainability. Now you gave out those lists in the bag yes. at the event. Uh, are those um, watchable at the website? Is that posted at the website? It, it, would, it would be posted on there, yes, we okay. will do that. When this, when this airs, I'm sure that will be up there. Yes, it will be. <laughs> you were kind enough to send us some pictures from that event, and I'm just going in my mind over some of the things there. Um, you had a container of detergent. Yes, that's something else I learned doing this event. I mean, I learned so much doing this event that if you look at the, your, your detergent container, that big, huge um, bottle, well, now they have sheets that are um, that have detergent in them and they dissolve in the wash and so you just there's many companies out there now that are creating these sheets not only is it is it sustainable in that you don't have this big plastic jug anymore storage they're flat they're like they're like literally the size of a piece of paper hmm. and i learned that by doing this and then i was having conversation with a friend of mine turns out she was already using them but i didn't know that you know, that's why I, why it's so important to share what we do. I think sometimes we're almost afraid to show something new, right? Well, maybe we're different from, from what you're doing, but we're all going to learn from each other. Well, the photograph of the detergent that I saw was from the brand Seventh Generation. I don't mean to give them a free plug, but um, that, that's the brand name. And that's what we use in our kitchen for dishwashing liquid. And Me too. Th the reason I started to use it a few years ago was um, there are no, no oil products 
no petroleum products used in that manufacture, unlike a lot of other things that are on the market. This is a plant-based product, which you don't think of a plant-based product as washing your dishes, but there it is. Exactly. And I use the same thing. And again, if you share, if you were in a, at a, a party <clears throat> and you shared that, imagine how many people would be happy that you shared that and that they can learn that too. You sort of figured it out on your own, right? But Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean there it was. I was you know, looking around for something. Um, I also use it to wash my hands for that. <laughs> really? Okay. Yeah. And so it's, in, that's an interesting. Why not? Why not? why not? I like that idea. I think I might be changing now to doing that from this conversation. <laughs> so that was in August and later in August, I know it was the same day, wasn't it? At the Dreamland Theater. And you had chosen the movie shown that night, which was Dark Waters. Tell us about that movie. A movie everybody should watch is my personal feeling. It is a very, it's a very sad story about um, chemicals for the forever chemicals, otherwise known PFAS, PFAS. But we, I think when I say forever chemicals, people seem to know what I'm talking about. If I um, actually, you asked about why I was driven to do this. I was asking people after I watched that movie on my own, do you know what PFAS is? And people are like, no. And I thought- Even on Nantucket? Mm -hmm. Really? And I thought, this doesn't seem right. And, and I, I, as I watched the movie and learned about the chemicals that were um, put in our water, which are now everywhere, um, that movie hit home with me that more people need to know about that, these things. And that movie, by the way, came out about five years ago, and it's a true story. This is not fiction. This is a true story. It stars Mark Ruffalo and Anne Hathaway. And it's based on a series of events that happened in West Virginia earlier in this century. And there's a book, there's also a book called Exposure by Robert Bellot, is that yep, his name? correct. Yeah. So this is, I just want to make it clear that this is not a fictional story. It's no. not. It's not a documentary, but it's based on a true story. It is so, the movie actually is really well done because it, it is, is, it, is a, it is technically a documentary or a true story, true story, but it's told in a way that we can all watch, as opposed to, I think sometimes documentaries, we tend to lose ourselves in, in them. Yeah, this, well, that's, they change some minor things, but basic story is true. It's a Hollywood movie, and it's got actors and so on and so forth, but it's a very good movie. In fact, in fact we'd already shown it as a first-run movie five years ago. And, and we were delighted to be able to bring and it And Rob Bellot also does a, a little cameo in the movie, which is kind of fun. In, in, oh, yes, he does. Yes. He does. The author of the book does. He does. Yes. yes, exactly. That's right. Well, and he's the lawyer that the, what, was the litigator against the company that um, dumped the chemicals in West Virginia. Um, tell us more about the, the story. Well, <laughs> um, I, I, it, oh, where, where do I begin? Basically, there was a farmer who had cows who were dying, and he wanted someone to listen to him, and nobody would listen to him. The EPA wouldn't listen to him. The company wouldn't listen to him. And uh, he he spoke, actually, to Rob Lott's grandmother, and she said, well, my, my grandson's a lawyer. And so he went and found him, and uh, Rob Lott very, never have not met the man, but man, he's got a heart of gold. And uh, went and and saw the farmer and and fought to to help these people. And while doing it, the company he worked for, too, the law firm he worked for, supported him too. You know, they weren't even sure all this whether this was going to work. But unfortunately, it's taken so long for all of this these things to happen, um, and for us to understand what is happening that we now PFAS is in everything. It's in our rain, it's in our water, it's in our clothes, it's, you know, it's just not, it's different chemicals. They've changed the name of the chemical. So calling them forever chemicals is probably the best thing we, we can say. And now it's starting to not only make the people in West Virginia in that small area sick, it's, it's going to affect us all unless we do something to change that. Well, I'd never heard of PFAS till, I don't know, three or four years ago. And it turned out that it was showing up in wells on Nantucket near the airport. And I guess they figured out pretty quickly that it was probably coming from fire retardant 
clothing that the fire department, the firemen were wearing doing their drills? Not just that, but the foam, the firefighting the foam. foam. Okay. It's okay. actually, that's what's going down into the wells. Our firefighters here also, um, the, the equipment that they were wearing definitely affected them. And we had one of our firefighters it, you know, and developed a, a cancer because of the equipment that he's wearing. And they are um, fighting to make a difference. And our equipment is changing, I believe, here to help our firefighters live healthier lives. Just these are people that are taking care of us, right? Yeah. Um, and and it, it, this we need to bring awareness. This is why playing, living, and playing in a sustainable world is important. We need to share these conversations so that people know these things are happening. Well, right after the movie, immediately following the movie, Mark Willett from the Water Comet Water Company spoke about water quality on Nantucket, about PFAS in particular. You probably remember more of this than I do, so I'm going to turn it over to you. Uh, he, he was very informative about this. It actually was amazing. The, the, the Q&A went on for 40 minutes. I don't think I've ever sat in a Q&A that long, and I think you ended it because it was time to end it. There were more questions. People were very curious and had many questions, and Mark was willing to answer all the questions. Yeah, he was. And, and we are very fortunate here because of our aquifer in our, in our island. We do have very um, clean water. On, uh, they're finding a little bit, they're finding some trouble in the water right now, but it's all, it's, it's due to firefighting. It's due to that foam mm -hmm. that we have on this island. That's, um, and it's been, it's been a wonderful thing, right? It put out fires and it, and it made things so that, um, so that they're waterproof um, and did a lot of great things, but it, it, it's not good. It's, it's harmful to us. I will say, since I'm able to talk now about this, <clears throat> don't eat microwave popcorn. There's PFAS in it. Yeah, I've heard that before. And your, yeah, and your Teflon, anything that's Teflon um, is, is got PFAS in it, any of your cookware that's nonstick. There's some cookware now coming out that's ceramic and that's nonstick that does not have it in it, but you mm -hmm. need to be very careful with what you choose. And if I remember correctly, anything that is flame retardant like a mattress Ex needs to be flame retardant. Um, things like that, uh, maybe the interior, the cabins on airplanes maybe, is that another one of the things? You know, now we're having this conversation, I didn't think about mattresses. I didn't think about the, that. And, th and that's, that's even scarier, isn't it? It's, it's literally in everything. And yeah, the carpeting, I mean, obviously you don't want a fire in your house, so if there's a compound out there that will prevent that or deter it, sure you want to use it, but it's not as simple as yeah, that. Yeah, I need to replace a carpet, and I've been thinking about the fact that, and some, I don't want to replace it because of that, but someone said wool, a wool carpet will, will be clean. I, I haven't looked into that yet, so I, I don't know, but that's what I was, that's what I was told. Again, from a conversation I was having with someone saying I didn't, I didn't want to replace my carpet because of that reason. And there are, if, if we all speak up and say we don't want things that have PFAS in them, the companies will listen because that's what's been happening the last four or five years. Slowly, there are different things that are being made that used to have PFAS in them that won't have PFAS in them and don't, floss being one of them. Well, if they're driving customers away, they will listen to that. Exactly. Very quickly. No customers, no company. And, and as consumers, we have, we have the responsibility to say what we need. But if we don't know what we need or what's happening, how do we how do we have a voice? That's why these conversations are so important. Nantucket seems has done a pretty good job of getting the word out on this. As I said a moment ago, I'd never heard of PFAS until I was reading in the newspapers about um, the contamination down here. And just a couple of days ago, early September, um, I guess they've discovered some more wells on Nantucket that have been contaminated. It was because of a fire. A fire was in one, I think, a thousand feet mm -hmm. of um, where the wells were, and they contam. They believe that that's where the contaminant came from. Because we're actually they're doing a PFAS well water study here on the island, and so that was found. Now you were saying, and, and Mark Willett was saying, um, I mean, PFAS is everywhere. That doesn't mean that. We're all going to die in five years. And there, there are degrees of penetration of this stuff. Correct. But it, it is measurable in more places than you would think. That doesn't mean it's a danger necessarily, but it means it could be a danger someday if we don't do something to arrest the use of it. 
Correct. In so many things. Well, here in Nantucket, out of the airport, you were talking about those wells being affected, yeah. and the water company actually rerouted water so that those people that were out there um, had clean water, but that doesn't mean that they didn't get sick. So people have mm -hmm. gotten sick, but yes, we need to, to understand that just because we have it in our mattress or in our clothing, no, we're not all going to get sick, but we need to, to, to be aware and try and be, as a consumer, say we don't want this anymore so that we can make a change. And calling it a forever chemical, they don't mean literally forever, but they're going to be around a long time long time, there, there far, are, far past our lifetimes. Yes, there are companies that are working on removing the um, PFAS from the water. Uh, one company I'm aware of called Aquaga, and they're, they're basically are removing the PFAS and making it a non-toxic, sort of like a salt substance that can be disposed of. Where a lot of companies, they're sort of like remove the water, but then they've got this other water they have to disp dispose of. So that's that's where it's a little, a little complicated. It's technology we're learning and the best way to handle these things. Let me change the subject completely before we continue with PFAS. what we're talking, PFAS. <laughs> um, when you're not working on this project, what do you do? Oh, goodness. Um, I actually do a lot of different things. One is I have, do a, tell. I have a publishing company and I create scavenger hunts and books, which started here on Nantucket with my daughter's brownie troop many years ago. I've been in business over 10 years and over 20 books. And uh, I have an app and a, and a little uh, owl, stuffed owl named Hunter that goes along with my business, as well as um, some real estate that I also am involved in as well. And where can we find your publications? Uh, thelookbookhunt.com or Mitchell's Book Corner or Nantucket Bookworks if you're on the island. And before you came to Nantucket, tell us about that. Oh, well, I was a mom. I was a single mom. Um, prior to being a mom, I was a teacher, kindergarten teacher. So that's kind of where I started. And then I, then I was a mom and, and started, the, started my, uh, my, the lookbook and did that while, while I was raising my kids. And where was this going on? Oh, Acton, Massachusetts. So not too far. Not, not too, too far. far. What, 20 miles outside of Boston, maybe? Yeah, right. At, yep. Just at Concord, Lincoln, Lexington, very historic area. That's, okay. that's where I, yeah. I grew up and raised my kids. So this is, this is the first move, major move I've made in my life was to come here. And why Nantucket and not, believe it or not, there are other nice places out there. <laughs> Hard to believe sometimes. You know uh, that. But why, why here? That expression, happy place? Yes. When I'm here, I, I, I'm happy. I just feel, I feel at peace. I feel the people are amazing. I like that. Um, I, know the, I know Amy in the post office and uh, the grocery store is right across the street from the post office, and, and I can do my little errands, and the bank's right there. I love that. I love that when I look out my windows, I can see the ocean, and I can hear the ocean, um, and that the deer run through my yard, as we were just <laughs> discussing earlier, and the bunnies. It's, it, living in, around nature here gives me incredible peace. I would say, um, and that I guess that's how this all this is all part of wrapped up in it, isn't it? What I'm what I'm doing with living and playing in a sustainable world is is getting back to nature, and here on this island, I'm able to do that. Well, as you, as you said a moment ago, had you not moved to Nantucket, um, your project might not have happened. It would not have happened. Bottom line, it would not have happened. I think, like on a daily basis, we we live more sustainably here. And so this just made my head start thinking about what are we doing to, to live sustainably? And, you know, learning about companies that, that, that do this. And I'm, you know, the solar, I'm looking into putting solar on my house now mm -hmm. um, to, 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 I wanna live the what I'm talking about. I wanna live sustainably as well as just talk about how we live sustainably. Mm -hmm. So that's and would I have met the the person the owner of the company somewhere else? No, probably not. So, you know, all those all those pieces came together to make the event happen for sure. You were saying I mean, it is easy to get in touch with people down here in a way that it's not if you're living in a bigger city off island or bigger town off island. Yeah. You can pick up the phone and get somebody, or you can say, "Well, I know so and so. Will you take my call?" Yes, of course. And that's unusual. Or walk into an office. Yes. 
um, uh, Remain is an organization here that is a nonprofit that is really about the island and really about um, about our, our our coast and and about na really there's a lot of natural nature that goes into what they do as well. But they, I happened to run into somebody that worked for Remain when I was in the bookstore. You know, it, and I was, I was just, I was talking with her, her dog, and, and then she came in, and I realized who she was, and I, you know, started talking to her. How often does that happen? And their office, I think, is right next door, two to doors away exactly. from the bookstore, and that's why, and that's why <laughs> she was in that vicinity. But, um, you know, I, I could walk into an office and, and, and talk to somebody. You know, they like to, for you to have an appointment, but sometimes you can just walk into. Yeah. That's the beauty of living here. It is. So I agree it's, completely. It's small town life. It really, it really is. And I, and I grew up when I grew up in Acton. It was a small town. It, it is no longer. But this is. I think that's another reason I came here to live full time. Acton is a nice place, but it's not Nantucket. Then again, mm, nothing is. Nothing is. Nothing is. You can find bits and pieces of it in various communities around the world, really. But to have so much of those bits and pieces in one place at one time, you don't find that in, in the way Nantucket is and you, anywhere. And you also don't find as many organizations in this one space either. Yes. I had just gone to um, the Conservation Foundation's annual meeting, and they had um, a gentleman speaking about how about how important nature is and how we can each make a difference. And his and his. Basically, his mission is to say that we need native plants. We need gardens that are native. And and I, what are the chances I would go to something like that anywhere else to learn yeah. that specific thing? Yeah. And that he he talked about how each of us can make a difference. You can have a you can have a little garden box that has native plants. It's going to bring the the ecology is is going to we're going to grow from that. You can have a big garden or a little garden. Everybody can make a difference. And that, that's the next thing I'll be doing in my yard is, is having a native garden so that the, the, an, the bugs and animals and things that are supposed to be here can live more easily. Because if we bring in non-native plants, and Charlie and I were discussing beforehand that hydrangea, sadly, are not native plants. I'm not giving up my hydrangea, but they're not, <laughs> they're not native plants. Um, but, we, but we can do other things that are that are still good for this for this particular location or any lo whatever location you live in and you have and the conservation foundation actually has a little pamphlet that shows you what is native and hmm. so you but if you went if I went to Acton I don't know if they have anything like that you know they but this island has just such a wealth and I think that's why I was able to do what I did because there was so much knowledge right in front of me and when you know, in the summertime, we have a lot of people that come in. And I think, and my hopes was with, with my event is that people that come in can see this and bring it back home. So we can take the beauty yes. of our island and what we have and the resources we have and bring them off island. That's a good point. Um, if you do plant the right seed, metaphorically, they will take it home to Boston, New York, Washington, you know, wherever Texas, it happens to be. California. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Now, you had two events in August of 2023. Uh, is it too soon to know about future events or future plans of any kind, for that matter? I had no idea how this was going to continue. I just was focused on my event. And then you said, can I do an interview with you? And I said, wow, okay, here's the next step. So, um, and I'm talking to some other people about doing different events here on the island. So I would say it's not too soon, but things sort of have to evolve the same way that they evolved before. I also want to enjoy my island a little bit in August. Too, so <laughs> I don't blame you. <laughs> family came in and that kind of thing. Well, August obviously is the time to do, is the best time to do these things, uh, but not the only time. Oh, no. Uh, a lot of people, I find anyway that a lot of people who live here year-round uh, are too busy to get involved in things in July and August. But once October, November, January, February roll around, then they're easier to, to attract to events of one kind or another. And to talk to. And yes, to, and to, to talk to. to. Def definitely. Well, they're planning all their events, right? 
<laughs> well, so, that's, so just, yeah, that's part of it. For too. the next season, yeah. for for the influx that we that we get. Although, as you and I talked about, how much it's grown here. It's not just the three thousand people that that lived here when you started many no, years it's ago. Not. So we really are not just we're not a little population anymore. We're a very large population year round. A, yes, uh, especially compared to what it was. Um, but you know, when you had the event at the Dreamland. Um, Usually, when, when we do a, a Q&A following a movie, 20 minutes, maybe 30. And as you mentioned, this was 40 minutes. And almost everybody stayed to hear what Mark Willett had to say, um, which was a lot. He was a, a wealth of knowledge. So this, you obviously struck a chord. And I couldn't help but think about what I just said, how many people weren't there. There were an awful lot of people in the room, but a lot of them wouldn't have been there because it was August. True. And they've got family here or they're working or some of them have gotten out of here in August because it's, it's too crowded for them. So um, I, I thought that was a, a – both of your events were, were wonderful starts. Thank you. There, there, is a, there is certainly a response out there that you've already gotten. And with word of mouth, you'll have more of a response. Well, I do think the word sustainable is – catching on and that's I don't mean that in a negative way I mean that people are paying attention and yeah. I think mother nature is sending us some messages so we're starting to to a pay lot attention of a lot of messages and I I think the I think the best message is that we all can make a difference we can all do something to change what is happening with our earth and we need to one more time, the uh, website for Living and Playing in a Sustainable World is... Lapsnow.com. And it's, if you think, listen to it, Living and Playing in a Sustainable World, L-A-P-S. Yes. And now is when we need to act. Yeah. Barbara Tibbetts, thank you for coming in. Thank you, Charlie. It's been a pleasure and well, very fun. It has been fun, and I, I think you're off to a great start. And if we've played a part in that, so much the better for all concerned. Thank you so much. For Profiles on Nantucket Community Television, Channel 8, I'm Charlie Walters. Thanks for tuning in. Please join me again.